Indeed, there you go. Thank you. Would you please join us and we'll stand and start our service by, let's stand and sing together. Can you hear me now? Thanks.
standing yeah that's a good thing they did good yeah look at that crowd up there hey we're in for a good time today he is risen let's do that again he is risen that's much better there we go take a moment while you're standing and greet somebody let them know that he is risen and you're excited they're here <laughs> Good morning. There you go. Good morning. He is risen.
hopefully you've got somebody there that you can shake hands with and say he is risen. He's not working? It says it's on. Yeah? Is that better? Can you guys hear this? I got I got a green light. That's better. Good morning, Kate. Can everybody hear this? There we go. Okay, we'll be taking up an offering later in the service. We do have baskets up front, and uh, we'll during the song we'll be able to come up and and give a gift if that's what you're moved to do. We also have a debit machine in the back and of course there's e-transfers we can do. I think that's getting better now, isn't it? There we are. And, and just a side note, the office will be closed Tuesday. Kelly, you're taking the day off. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Somebody's clapping for Kelly. That's it. <laughs> I like that. Back to work. No, not Monday. Tuesday. Some people Monday maybe. Okay, cards for missions. There's a table in the back. Uh, help us celebrate the resurrection with our missionaries. Please take time to stop at the missions table and sign cards for the missionaries. Just a nice touch. Some upcoming events. The office, we said that. Oh, there we go. I got that twice. It was important. Phoenix Ladies Day. Phoenix Transition Home, May the 11th, 3 to 7. We are looking for clothing and makeup donations, as well as female volunteers to help with hair, makeup, child care, and transportation for the ladies. We will have an appetizer and mocktail dinner with the ladies after the spa activities. All clothing donations welcome. We especially would like to have some dressy options for the ladies. Contact the church office if you have questions, but not Tuesday. There you go. Next weekend, come with your family and watch Soul. Details in the bulletin. Lots of stuff in the bowl and two for you. I'm going to ask you to stand and we'll do a call to worship. There we go. I'll read the light, you read the dark. The darkness is banished. Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Sons of men and angels say. God. 
think we can have a seat, everyone, as we're going to have a scripture being read for us. John 20, 1 to 20, from the New Living Translation. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple started out for the, for the tomb. They were both running, but the, the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw ah, two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angel asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought, she, she thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I have yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. This is the reading of the Lord. Amen. In the next song, we're going to take the offering um, before we do all pray. But I just wanted to explain, if you're visiting this morning, absolutely don't feel like this is why we invited you here, because it's not. Um, but you're welcome to, if you'd like to, um, come forward with an offering and put it in the basket. But again, um, that's not why we are here. <laughs> it's an opportunity to um, give a tithe and be a part of what God is doing at First Baptist. Um, yeah, so we'll do that during the next song. But first, I'll pray. So God, thank you for your word. Thank you for this story, Lord, that never gets old. The reason why we follow you is that you are a risen Lord, that you indwell each of us here, Lord, that you are with us, you are in the room, and you are in us. Thank you, God, for what you are doing in our lives. Thank you for your life, for your love, for your resurrection, for our redemption. And God, as we give our tithes and offerings this morning, it'll be a sacrifice of worship and a sacrifice of giving. And thank you, God, for that opportunity that we can give out of um, blessing and out of extra. And Lord, as we also release our kids in the next song, I pray for them as they go downstairs, that they would have a great time with each other and with their leaders, that they would know they are loved and they are welcomed here and that you are with them there too. So we just give you all of these things and we pray this together in Jesus' name. So will you stand and sing this song with us and we'll um, invite you to come forward when you're ready. If you're, if you're um, there's all, yeah. Up front. 
from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with the saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Vainly they watched his bed, Jesus my standing we'll sing the next song together like we mean it <laughs>
Amen. Thank you so much for singing that like you meant it. You can have a seat, and I think Cheryl's going to come and pray with and for us. Good morning. Happy Easter to everyone. And it's so great. Our Redeemer lives. I have a few little quotes um, that I just... Roy always does this, and I just thought, oh, this is a fun thing to do. <laughs> so I thought I'd begin with, with that. This is, one is from Rick Warren. Jesus did not die on the cross just so we could live comfortable, well-adjusted lives. His purpose is far deeper. He wants to make us like himself. This is our greatest privilege, our immediate responsibility, and our ultimate destiny. And then from Richard Rohr, what the re resurrection reveals more than anything else is that love is stronger than death. Jesus walks the way of death with love, and what it becomes is not death, but life. Surprise of surprises, nothing dies forever, and all that has died will re be reborn in love. N.T. Wright, the message of the resurrection is that the world matters, that the injustices and pain of this present wor world must now be addressed with the news that healing, justice, and love have won. And this one is from Pope John Paul II. We are the Easter people, and hallelujah is our song. And our Savior, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. That's from John 11, verses 25 to 26. Let us pray together. We praise you, O Lord, our God and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we thank you that what you have conspired so long ago has transpired, has come to fruition, that we are your people who follow you, that we can sing the hallelujah song, that we can be transformed into the likeness of Jesus by following his example. We praise you, Lord, that you do not leave us nor forsake us, that you are faithful to continue your work in us to present us blameless on that day when we face you face to face. And Lord, we bring before you our mission partners. I have them here. The Salvation Army and St. Vincent de Paul. Youth for Christ. InterVarsity. Lord, these missions that are busy at work, committed to serving you. We pray your blessing upon them. For the work that we do, we are so grateful that they, you have called them to this work and they, in a very specific and special way, are able to reach out to those that maybe many others of us have no contact with. And your love is shared 
and your healing comes. Thank you, Lord. And we pray, too, for the CBWC ministries and CBM ministries. We thank you for Bill and Emily Chung with Sunset Solutions working in um, Spain and Northern Africa with the varying ministries that they're involved in with Radio Vida, with the textile, with the plastics um, um, recycling, and for their engineering project. Lord, we thank you that uh, they will soon be returning to, um, to this work, and we thank you for those who have been faithful in um, supporting and um, carrying on while they have been home on leave. We thank you, too, for um, the Huttons in Bolivia with CBM. We thank you that um, for their work in Bolivia, and we continue to ask that you bless their ministry there, that you will open up doors for them to expand and receive support from other partners, Lord, to that work can continue to progress and grow. And for the ACCNS, the African Christian Church and Schools Women's Department in Kenya, Lord, we thank you for the faithful work of, of this women's department in training women to um, have employment and to be discipled in, in you, Lord, that they will be strong followers of Christ. We pray, too, for Darlene W.'s brother, Cecil, and, his, and, and Darlene's brother-in-law battling cancer for Mary Dick, and for others that are also battling cancer. We ask your special healing to come. Let your, let your spirit flow. Let your hand be upon them to heal body, mind, and soul. For those with long-term health concerns and injuries, for families with rifts and marriages that are struggling, O oh Lord, you are faithful. And we ask that, again, you heal, you restore, you give hope. that you are present and you care for each and every one. And we pray, too, for um, Yulia's family in the passing of their great-grandmother in Ukraine from natural causes. We thank you that um, even though they... The divide seems great between Ukraine and here. That, Lord, your connection is right here and now. And I pray that you will bless and touch this family in their grief. That your hand will be present among them. They will know your faithfulness and your care for them. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful Easter service and pray that you will teach us and guide us to follow you always. Amen. Thank you, Cheryl. Will you stand and sing another song with us, please?
like a maze. I made it. Good morning. He is risen. Indeed. Amen. My name is Crystal. I am one of the pastors here. Pastor Wayne is back next week. Yay! We're all Kelly and I are excited for the day off, and we're even more excited, I think, to have Wayne back. Yep, we are all excited, Anne-Marie. The accounts of the resurrection are in each of the Gospels. It's going to be a long reading, but I'm going for it. 
I'm going to read one more account. This is from Luke. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men with clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you when he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But the others, the eleven, did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them, what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. When the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. And while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened 
thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He is risen. Thank you. The catastrophe of Friday. The grief. The confusion. Done. It's over. No more. He is risen. It's risen indeed. The waiting is finished. Morning is turned into dancing and the dawn breaks. The tomb is empty. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Jesus, who is crucified, dead, and buried, is alive. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you, as Cheryl did, that through the resurrection, we discover that you are life that the love that you displayed comes to us and flows through us. And today, as we take a moment to consider the event of Easter, may your hand be on us, and may you open the story to us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The crucifixion and the resurrection are both part of the event we call Easter. It's an event that we, in our tradition, symbolize with an empty cross. There is a cross on the very back wall, and we have one in our foyer. Many wear it as jewelry. This empty cross symbolizes both the sacrifice and the victory, the death, the resurrection. Paul describes this event in 1 Corinthians as being of the first importance that the Christ, and this is a title, not a name, the Messiah, the King who comes, has died for our sins, was buried, and was raised on the third day. And then Paul goes on to remind us strongly that it was a physical event. It was witnessed by many, many people. The Gospels are bound together in one book for us, but they are four books. The epistles, individual letters, all attesting to the difference that Christ made. Paul points out that Christ is raised from the dead, also 1 Corinthians 15. And so our hope is secure. We are no longer bound in the wrong that we do as humans. We are free in Christ. We have hope for the new heaven and the new earth. When the kingdom is made whole, when love and justice are spread across the cosmos. He is risen. He is risen Paul explains that our victory is won through Christ's victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Where, O oh grave, is your victory? He took the weight of evil on the cross and he broke its power through death. But then he went to the grave and it could not hold him and he broke the power of death itself. And while the final defeat comes when all is made right at the end of the time that is ours, we know now that he is alive and the victory is his. He is the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, the life, the life that comes from an empty grave. Easter. The resurrection of Jesus, God incarnate, changes everything. He is risen, He's risen indeed. 2,000 years later, we live in the knowledge of all that has been known about this event. 
We have read the Gospels. We've read the stories. For many of us, we have celebrated many Easter's and heard the story read many times. But for a few moments, let's go back to that day. Let's go back before the church fathers, before all the people who reflect on what this event means, and sit in the stories that have been read today. The events of Easter, which Neil read from the Gospel of John and I read from the Gospel of Luke. The confusion, the grieving that is over this day, it's going to take a good part of the day for that to shift for them. Because they do not have 2,000 years of knowledge. They have just come through the darkest time that they have experienced in their recent life. After three years of walking with Jesus, they witnessed him die. They know he's in that grave, except on Easter morning, the grave is empty. The fear, the concern, what if someone stole the body? But no. No, instead the story turns stranger Stranger than Romans or Jews coming in to steal it. The Pharisees, they don't want anyone getting near it. The Romans and the Pharisees, the religious leaders, want to make sure that Jesus doesn't come back. They want to make sure that that body doesn't disappear because if it disappears, they fear unrest. They fear unrest that could topple the very on-the-line peace of Jerusalem. But they can't hold God in a grave. Each gospel highlights a different facet. If you have time, I encourage you in this week to go through and read each of the four accounts. In Luke, the angels appear. I wonder if Mary Magdalene had ever seen an angel. If Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, realized what was seen inside the tomb as the two men say, why do you look for the living among the dead? Why are you looking for the living God in a graveyard? He is risen. Rem you need. Remember what he said. In John, Mary Magdalene sees Jesus after the men have come and gone but doesn't recognize him. For some reason, this risen Lord is himself and yet is different. Jesus is alive. They do not understand. And it seems wildly impossible. Mary recognizes him and runs to tell the disciples. The disciples who then are so confused that they do not know exactly what to think. How confused would we be? Would we believe the first time that someone told us? Or would it take actually seeing him in person? The next people to see Jesus in the Gospel of Luke are the couple on the road to Emmaus. This couple are approached by Jesus once again. This is the Jesus that they have known and followed. They are part of the wider group of disciples, and they have been in Jerusalem. They are keenly aware of all that has transpired. And this man who approaches them, who is Jesus, asks them, What's going on? And they are sad. They have heard, but they do not understand. And so they tell Jesus all about Jesus. And then Jesus, with gentle love, oh, why, why are you slow to understand, uses his words, to open to them the scriptures, to explain to them their prophets, to explain to them all that needed to happen as they walk the nine miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. 
What must it have been like when they get to the home, they offer the hospitality expected of them. And Jesus is sitting at the table and they hand him the food and he takes the bread and suddenly they see him as he breaks it. And the Jesus who is risen goes from a mystery to the rabbi that they have loved to not just rabbi, but living God. Their eyes have been open. He is risen. He is risen indeed. The disciples see him next in the passage in Luke. He appears in a locked room doesn't come through the door, just appears because the risen Christ is no longer trapped in the confines of a physical body. He appears. He eats with them. And this is an important thing. In the record, one of the reasons it keeps getting mentioned is because ghosts don't eat. Visions don't eat. But Jesus is truly alive, and he shares a meal with them. And then he likewise, because they are in wonder and awe, they still, even though they are seeing it in Luke, it says in wonder and amazement, they still don't quite get it until he opens the scripture to them. 2,000 years ago, a new beginning a beginning in so many ways because they go from being students of a rabbi who can do miracles to recognizing the presence of God in person who has been living among them for the last years, who's been bringing them with love alongside, who they have seen touch the outcast with no shame, rather than the things that are known to defile people within the spiritual, the laws of the temple. He makes them pure. Rather than storms drowning people, he stops the waves. They look back and they can see three years in which they were walking with God, and sometimes they would see it. Peter makes that claim. John makes that claim. Even Thomas makes that claim at times. But it doesn't quite come to full knowledge until this moment when the man who was buried is alive. God who went to the cross is risen. He is risen indeed. They will discover in the early church as we see in the writings of the early church, that their life is now with this risen Jesus. They have truly come alive in him, as we have. We can see their growth and their struggle so like our own if we read the book of Acts. We see the people that we hold up as heroes as they stumble and fall and are picked up by the Holy Spirit. And God does not set them aside, but puts them back on the road and loves them as he loves us and picks us up. We live in the same hope that they do, that Jesus, God who has come to live among us, has defeated evil and death and is creating in them in the early church as he does in us his kingdom. His kingdom where love wins, where justice flows freely because justice and righteousness are so close together, where there are living waters, where the Spirit comes and walks, not just beside us, but in us, where our prayers reach the throne of God because God is this close. In Hebrews, it talks about the fact that in the new covenant, we can step into the throne room of God. Jesus has made it so that there is no separation. The kingdom of heaven and our world are enmeshed. And we, as our lives are changed by Christ, are evidence. 
in Colossians, it says that our lives are hidden with Christ in God. In this life, we are one. There is no difference between people who have different physical makeups. There is no difference depending on how much money you have, where you're born, what culture you come from. And we who here are one are one with every believer in this city. We are one with every believer in this province, in this country, and across this planet. So many of us today celebrating Easter, celebrating the fact that he is risen. He's risen indeed. Because we are in his life, we carry his peace. We are clothed with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. This particular list is also in Colossians. And it looks very much like Jesus. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And we learn to live into that life. And for some, it comes slowly and with great struggle as they work through trauma and addiction. And for some, we see miraculous change where we wonder how it could happen. And then we realize it happens because the life of Christ is in that person. And we see the grace of God to a world that has not always accepted him when we see love and justice spread outside our circle. He is risen. He is risen indeed. The catastrophe of Friday has turned to victory. The despair and confusion that the disciples felt with Jesus going willingly to the cross, how can this be, becomes joy and peace as the disciples glimpse the wonder of the God who lives. The covenant made in his self-giving love on the cross is carried past death into new life. The old has gone, the new has come. And so we too are brought to life in him. We move from death to life. We move from despair to hope and joy. And because he lives, we are constantly renewed in this when we struggle, when we fall. Because his life and love are so overflowing, they follow us when we wander and they chase us down when we stray. His love is not held back from anyone. Every person that you meet today and this week and throughout life is loved by God. Every person who we have the joy of interacting with or who we struggle to interact with is loved by God. And his life is available to each of us and to each of them and flows through our world because it is God that holds it all together also in Colossians. You might think I'm about to recommend you go read Colossians. Go read Colossians. We're going to come back to Paul, though, to fifth, the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, because this is the linchpin. Easter well, the gospel is all of the life of Jesus and all that Jesus does and all that is. It is the death and resurrection that is the center of that victory. It is the center of the victory that is ours. But praise be to God who gives us the victory in Jesus. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Today we will celebrate the resurrection through a final song if the team would like to come up. But we will retell this story over the year. And next year, Lord willing, we will gather again and we will focus in on this story because like the disciples who though they had seen Jesus still wondered and had questions, we will wonder and have questions as we continue to grow and are discipled by Christ. So we will remind ourselves that Jesus is alive 
that there is joy and life in him, that we worship not a dead God who is just a statue or a symbol, but we worship the living God who was and is and is to come, who brings life and freedom, who clothes us with joy and hope, who turns our mourning into dancing and brings comfort and clarity in our struggles. Today, there is joy in the house of the Lord because he is risen. He is risen indeed. I'm going to pray. I invite you to stand while I pray, and then we're going to sing a final song. Heavenly Father, we come to you in joy. We come to you today celebrating, bringing every sorrow and laying it at your feet. God, we ask that you would do that which you did for the disciples, that you would bring clarity and joy and comfort and wonder and amazement and whatever it is that we need today so we can experience the living Savior. Amen. of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your So, there are a couple announcements, then I will pray. First announcement, Cheryl, 
is going to be over at the cross for anyone who would like prayer. She's lovely to pray with. So if you would like it, please go. She will be there. Second, please go and put your signature and a brief note on those cards for the missionaries. The report back when we sent the last ones after Christmas was that they were incredibly encouraging. So let's make sure that we are sharing that life and love. Also, I must now pray for brunch. Can I start with brunch? Yes. Okay, so I think of brunch as breakfast foods at lunchtime. So there's breakfast foods. So there's boiled eggs and hash browns and sausages and yogurt and waffles with like strawberries to put on top and whipped cream and fruit salad and baked oatmeal with all the stuff you can pile on baked oatmeal. I know. It sounds amazing, right? But there's still more. But there's more because some people think that brunch is lunch foods when you didn't have breakfast. I don't know, but it's also, so there's also a beautiful soup, hamburger soup that Jamie has made that I think is even gluten-free and dairy-free, but it is gluten and dairy-free, but there are some allergens in it. So if you are a person who has allergies please check with us before yeah. you take that soup. Yeah, but so when the baked oatmeal is gluten-free and dairy-free as well. So there's something for everybody, and there's so much food. So please, please, please stay. And, Laura Lee, uh, how, how should they progress out to get said food? Maybe just give us like five minutes. I see that we're putting things yeah. out. Um, the tables are set up in the foyer, and then the coffee garden is set up to eat in. Um, it should, technically there's room for 100 in there, but if it feels a little squishy, it's also okay to bring your food in here and sit down at the chairs and eat if you want to, but please stay and visit with us and have some food. So allow me to say grace for our brunch. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those who came up with the idea of brunch. I thank you especially for Jamie and Laura Lee, who have done a lot of legwork. I thank you for all those who are helping today. God bless them for the work they have put in. And Lord, bless our time together as we celebrate just by being in each other's presence. Bless the food. Bless this day. Amen. Please take a few minutes, as Laura Lee said. In just a few minutes, someone can just kind of start, and a line will naturally probably form. <laughs>